Hello, hello, and welcome to another Naked Conversation with. Today, we have Jenny Scordagmalia. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> from Miami TV, and we are going to be getting to know Jenny a little bit. She's going to be sharing a little bit about herself and her views on social nudity. And if you guys are interested in following her social media or knowing a little bit more about her, you can find her at Jenny. Scordagmaglia, Scordagmaglia. <laughs> um, all links in the description of this video. And also I'm going to tag her on Twitter when I post this video, when it goes live. So you guys won't have to struggle um, finding her. So Jenny, yeah. thank you. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? Hi, Hector. Good. <laughs> We're here in the jungles of Tulum, hanging out. <laughs> Very beautiful view. Thanks. Hey. So Jenny, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So how would you introduce yourself and what you do for a living? Um, well, that's a little bit of a long or complicated question. What I would do for a living, I would say probably TV host and entrepreneur in the sense that I just like doing a bunch of different stuff. But um, since I know that you aim mainly for a nudist community. Yes, I've, I've never said like I'm a nudist or I'm a naturist. I think like it just kind of um, came natural that I host and I host naked. <laughs> um, and I do TV shows and interview people naked, but I would like to think that it's the same as if I was with clothes, you know, it doesn't necessarily put a label on people. Uh, we were actually talking about the Cipolite, about the whole label thing. And I met so many people that I think have taught me that, that it's it's true. Everybody's just unique and individual and we all do things that makes us happy. And that doesn't necessarily mean put in a label like you're part of a group. So for me, I would just like to say I'm a spiritual person overall and work-wise entrepreneur and TV host. That's what I would say. Awesome. You're right. Yeah. I think the the there's a lot of different schools when it comes to labels. I, for one, yeah. use it as a tool, uh, as a communication tool, because if you add a label to something, it's easier to explain what it's about, right? So, but a lot of people have a problem with labels because sometimes instead of defining or instead of trying to explain, the labels turn into uh, like like a uh, closed enclosed area that limits your behavior and your expression that you have yeah. to be a certain way and I disagree with labels when it comes to that but for educational or descriptive descriptive purposes I would consider myself to be a nudist or a naturist and even then yeah. there's a lot about naturism or nudism that I don't necessarily I wouldn't say agree with but I don't necessarily feel like they describe me or, or what I like to do. So, right. Yeah, I understand you. So tell us a little bit, Jenny, about how it was growing up. Uh, according to my knowledge, you were born in New Jersey and you migrated uh -huh. to Uruguay. How, how was life in Uruguay growing up? Um, God, life in Uruguay is really great. I honestly, you can't find a lot of Uruguayans that move out of Uruguay because I feel like they have everything they need. The place is always financially stable. They don't get to go to war with anybody else. Um, but obviously I didn't have a choice. So I was three months old, grew up in New Jersey. Then I traveled to, well, they took me to Uruguay. <laughs> three months of baby, I really couldn't say, no, I don't want to go. No, but I like to say that my youth in Uruguay was probably one of my happiest moments that I can remember of my childhood because I grew up in a farm that I think that's why also I'm so comfortable with nature, <laughs> um, with animals, horses, cows, I mean, milking little sheep, you can imagine it. That's what I did when I was little. And that was all kind of just taken away from me one day when I turned 13 and they, my parents with the best decision and intentions, of course, took me back to the U.S. to go to school. But it was, it was something difficult to leave behind because it's such a natural life where um, even like in teenage years, like girls don't really go about wearing makeup or anything. I traveled to the U.S. at 13. And when I came back one year later to Uruguay, my friends were like, what is that on your face? <laughs> 
So it, it's such a huge difference to transition from um, a place like Uruguay uh, and, and I would like to think any place really outside of the US and get dropped into high school or middle school at that specific age, you know. But um, in the sense of nudity, Uruguay, mm, not very friendly, very close-minded, but people are, I think now it's changed. I think they do have um, some nude beaches in Uruguay, but when I grew up, I, I don't remember hearing or anything about that. <laughs> And um, yeah, my parents would have been the one saying, if somebody's kissing, no, 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 don't look. So I was raised Catholic and in a very close-minded family, um, but in their, in their best intentions, of course, not like in a negative way. That's of just, course. I think it's we all come from that. <laughs> it's really interesting to me that you grew up, like that you, when you were a child, you moved to another country, grew up uh, very important years there, and then went back to the United States. In my case, it was the other way around. When I was four oh, years really? old, I migrated to the United States. I lived there till I was 12, and then I came back to Mexico. And that was, oh. it was also like a cultural shock. Um, yeah. At first I hated it, but then with time, I, I, I started really enjoying it. And now I think I'm grateful for it because it really defined uh, the way I see, I, I see life. Um, so yeah. yeah that you know we are human beings are survivors so i think we just adapt wherever you drop us we'll adapt eventually <laughs> yeah and it's easy it's interesting how we evolve and and like generate certain traits that help us survive in, in, in different scenarios or different areas so that can really determine the way that someone views the world and and being able to grow up in a certain place and then have like a completely different cultural shift also, I think contributes on being a little bit more open-minded because you understand yeah. that things aren't the same everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why people today that travel so much have such a wide aspect towards acceptance of other cultures and other ideologies. I think traveling definitely adds to that. I think it's important. I agree. Yeah, you're right on. Can I do something? Hold on. Sure. It's gonna look crazy. <laughs> All right. So tell us a little bit about how your relationship with your body was growing up. You mentioned that you went from Uruguay where people didn't really like teenagers didn't really use makeup. And now you yeah. go to the United States and little girls are asking for boob jobs for their quince años, like their 15 years yeah. instead of having a party or along with the party. How, how did that affect the way that you saw your body? Um, a lot, actually, because I, I was coming from a society where we wouldn't even ever consider plastic surgery to, well, in Florida, at least where I went to high school in Boca Raton, it was like my very close friends were getting boob jobs for their sweet 15 or 16, and they would still get the party and the car. I mean, Boca Raton is a place of money, so... Yeah. Um, you know, I would have friends from Colombia or Venezuela and they would travel back to their country, you know, and they would get their body done, of course, and you would just kind of look at yourself and be like, well, I don't look like that. <laughs> like, that's, that's not very nice, <laughs> but uh, they looked amazing. So yeah, that was a big, um, I think that was, that would affect anybody in any way because you want to be a par, or I don't know if that's the way you say it in English, but like in the same level as your friends when you're specifically in that age because you want to be as pretty as them. So, yeah. but um, body-wise, yeah, I, of course, like anybody else had my insecurities, absolutely. Yeah, I, I remember that when we went to San Diego, we, we were there for a month, uh, like about five or six years ago. And it was mm -hmm. really, it was really difficult, like because everyone had plastic surgery. And I remember that we would spend time in Black Speech and like, at least eight out of 10 had a boob job. One was like, yeah. I'm not sure if it's a boob job or they did a really good job. And, and the other one was natural. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's like okay. being confronted with completely unrealistic beauty standards really affects yeah. your self-esteem and the way that you perceive yourself. Yeah. I used to, um, I mean, at least in high school, like I would work out two times a day. So I would go to the gym um, when I would get back from school or really early in the morning. And then I would go back um, at night. 
So for me, it was like very important to not have any amount of fat in my body at that age. <laughs> That's all I cared about. No fat, all muscle. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so of course it affects. <laughs> and did you, did you ever have any type of nude experience growing up? No, I can't say I have. Um, well, when, like maybe in my, when I was eight years old or so, me and my cousins, we would get naked and take uh, bathtub showers. Uh, we were all young. I feel like everybody's done that also, but more in like the Latin community than anything. Like they would just get a bunch of naked kids together and have them take like bubble baths or <laughs> like, oh, everybody bond here, just get naked. And here's a little rubber ducky. <laughs> It was just, it's so innocent, you know, so I think that would be about my only experience in my youth is getting naked with my cousins and uh, have, we were all girls, obviously, but, and uh, having a bubble bath shower. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that we're all born nudist in a way, like feeling comfortable in our own skin. And as we grow yeah. up, they, they dress us, but like metaphorically, not only with they don't only dress us with clothes, they also dress us with insecurities and discomfort towards yeah. our body. And they teach us that it's something that we have to hide that no one else can see and we can't see anyone else's bodies. So that added to unrealistic beauty standards on social media and on TV and things like that can really distort the way that you perceive yourself. So yeah. when you were growing up, um, I, I did happen to find some information about you online uh, that you were that you participated in a lot of beauty pageants and modeling and all that. Um, how did that affect the way that you perceived yourself? Like, I'm under the probably the wrong idea that since there's a lot of pressure to be perfect, a lot of you did you develop yeah. a lot of insecurities. Yeah, um, so I got, when I went to, um, there's a lot of schools in Florida because there's a lot of pageant beauty winners in Florida. So I got like, my mom wanted me to go to the ethical school, you know, where they teach you how to hold your forks, how to sit down, how to, I've obviously left half of that behind, but <laughs> am I sitting correctly? I have no idea. But they pretty much just teach you how to be a lady, let's say. Mm -hmm. um and I had the most amazing teacher Sheila she was Miss Florida um back in the day I don't remember the year but it, it's it's when it comes to, I mean it's, you have to be very conservative you have to make sure it doesn't move anywhere you have to make like everything has to be sprayed down if it is about to move um and I think that it's also I didn't feel it like such of a safe community like um before I started with Miami TV I would go to a lot of castings and uh, I mean there's some castings that you have 17 18 year old girls going to that are not appropriate for that age like the casting director was and we're talking about like you know any kind of Hollywood scenes or below it doesn't matter um but in Miami, at least, you know, you would see casting directors just be super drunk and uh, trying to make maybe even make a pass. So, of course, you're raised into this uh, ambience where the clothing is the least of your problems, you know, where it's like, no, you need to make sure where it is that you're going. And it's a little bit sad because it's supposed to be such a friendly environment. But I, I never told my mom about those, you know, those castings, like, because she would be so exciting. Oh, you're getting a casting for a billboard, a billboard. you're getting a casting for a magazine. And, um, and, and, but the environment is not so friendly, I would say for young girls. And when it comes to body, um, they're very blunt in telling you, listen, oh, you have a casting. Okay, well, this casting is for, um, I remember one time where it was for rings so you would have to like hold I don't know the rings in um, your hand but it was just a t-shirt like a man's t-shirt it's the legs the, the man's t-shirt and the rings in their hand um, back nose it was for a nudist I think it would be a little bit of an awkward situation <laughs> um, but I don't know I think I guess today maybe I would see it in a different way in that moment it was like but like somebody is asking me to get naked, like this is not appropriate. 
<laughs> and maybe it's not appropriate still, but um, maybe I won't see it that way. Of course, you're always being sexualized, no matter what you do, from a young age. It's really sad. Can you yeah. again? <laughs> yeah, it's really sad. Um, so how did, how did you come from, from growing up in a conservative family, going to Catholic school, etiquette school, to end up like presenting naked? Like what was the transition? How did, how did that occur? Um, so at the beginning I started in Miami in um, a local station where we would do a TV show going to like, to, like uh, Blue Martini or they're really like hot spots in the area. Um, and little by little, we noticed that we didn't want to be on TV anymore, at least in the, it was so short, it was so close, um, that it was only local. So we said, well, let's do something a little bigger. And it was actually all my husband's idea. <laughs> so we can blame him for this <laughs> or applaud him for it. But, um, it was more of a, okay, let's try something new. Let's try to um, work with people's psychology, you know? So we would go out and do interviews with a nip slip. And we, we were actually a couple of times in the uh, Miami times because it was awkward, you know, not awkward, but it was different for people, but nobody ever reacted like in a bad way or anything. It was just like, oh, okay, wait, what am I supposed to see? What am I supposed to look at your boobs? Or am I supposed to talk to you like a normal person? <laughs> um but that's how that's literally just how it started it started with the the little nip slips that I totally had under control after a while at the beginning it wasn't easy you know like I think everybody that ever gets a little bit of nudity in public um per se it's the first time is never easy but you kind of just grow into it and it would get to a point where I wouldn't even realize that my shirt would open it was just oh wait oh, that just happened. Okay, no, whatever. So I just think it's like everything in life, you just get used to things. And as long as you are normalizing it for yourself, um, and you're not doing anything wrong, then it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people respond according to the way that you react. Like I've been naked in front of a lot of people. And since I feel comfortable when I'm naked, they, they seem like there's something that goes on in their head is like, he's naked. But he's uncomfortable. But he's comfortable. So, should I act like he's not naked? Like a lot of things happen in their head, and it's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's. I like to say, just don't overthink it. Just you know. If, but you're totally right about that. If you're. And and I think we could all say that we've been through this. In my case, at least, it was at the beginning very difficult. And then the more I noticed that it wasn't that big of a deal and people would react, actually responding to the questions that I was asking them, um, it no longer became such a big deal in my eyes, you know, because I'm like, oh, well, I could totally get away with this. And, and that, then we just advanced a little more until 10 years later, we're naked. Wow. So it took you 10 years to go from, from the nip slip to completely naked yeah i think um maybe maybe eight maybe eight i don't have exactly like the first time we ever did a naked like show i don't remember to be honest with you maybe but yeah maybe eight years but it, it takes a while especially idea? when you're in a public um in a public view Sorry. Was that also your husband's idea? Um, no, I think that just kind of flourished. You know, it was, I was already more comfortable with my body. There is a trick that I always tell people, if you want to be comfortable with your body is you have to get used to walking naked in your home with a bunch of mirrors around you, because that I can't even begin to tell you like, when I started on TV, uh, something that my husband recommended to me and another producer was, you need to be at home with a bunch of mirrors, walk around naked, because once you feel comfortable, and they're not nudists, okay? They're on, you know, my, my husband did Miss Argentina for, I think, like, 12 years or more. So he was used to being around more beautiful women, let's say. <laughs> and, uh, and apparently, this is just something that they recommend. And you know what? It totally worked. I mean... 
it's just getting comfortable with your own skin in your own home and your privacy and getting to the point where you could see that whatever you see as a flaw and just the more you walk through that mirror, the more you see that, that what you see as a flaw and you just accept it because it's like, well, this is what I got. You have to work with what you have um, in whatever kind of situation just to live or even for things like what I do in TV. So um, yeah, walk around naked, you guys, in your own home first with mirrors. <laughs> it changes your personality so much. It just gives you such a confidence boost. boost. And I think that you could probably relate to this. I think anybody that's ever gone naked for the first or a couple first times could say that their confidence definitely went higher because you you don't have anything to worry about physically so you just worry about what you're going to say you worry about how you're going to interact with other people you you know your mind is somewhere else not about oh you know I have this little bump over here or cellulite or no you're just living as you were made <laughs> I think your experience is really interesting versus mine because I'm used to being naked around people that are naked as well. And you're used to being naked around people that are dressed. Yeah. How, how is, is, mm -hmm. do you think there's, a, is there any difference? Like when, when you went to see Belita, I don't know if you've had other naturist experiences, but when you went to see Belita and other people were naked, did you feel any difference in that interaction? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like from day to night. Um, so I have been to um, Hollywood in Miami, which is a new beach. And I've also been to Vera Beach. It's in Spain. I definitely recommend you guys check it out because it's a it's also a naturist community. I didn't fall into it because I was looking for it. We just we would go to Spain and just rent a car and go town by town. And we found this amazing naturist community right by it was literally like a condominium and the beach right next to it. So you could eat at the restaurants, kind of like Cicolita, but in Spain. Um, but I found that being in nature's locations, you, you don't stand out. So you just do your life and whatever. But being naked amongst people that are clothed, usually it's a nonstop of people coming up to you and saying, oh my God, what you're doing is such a movement. And it gets to the point where you're just, like I've gotten to the point, at least here in Tulum, where I'm like, I'm, I'm, you actually get tired of those comments. Like at first it was like, yeah, thanks, you know. <laughs> and now it's like, I'm just normal. Like, I feel like I'm normal. Like I'm, I'll be standing in, in where you're allowed to be naked in Tulum. I'll be standing at a bar and I'll be naked because it's a place where you can be naked. And it's never a negative reaction. It's just a matter of what we were just talking about. How do you portray yourself? So when they see that you're that I'm just hanging out and I'm comfortable, normally it's it's the wow factor of wow, you know, like I couldn't do that or I could do that, but I'm I'm ashamed or I mean I've gotten so many stories <laughs> that it's just okay, you know, great. <laughs> Let me just be naked now. <laughs> just want to hang out. But it's different, yeah. I didn't know there was bars in Tulum where you could be naked. Yeah. Huh? I didn't know there were bars in Tulum where you could be naked. Yeah, there is. Uh, so it's one of them. Um, I've personally gotten approval from the owner so that if anybody does go there and is naked, they don't get kicked out because it happened once that I promoted it and a couple went and they didn't get kicked out, but they were told to put their clothes on. So I made sure I had like a formal meeting <laughs> Yeah. and uh it shouldn't happen again but it's a free place um by free place i mean it's not a nudist location but it's just people are there and they in other words do what they please as long as they're not uh like you're not on top of somebody else like you're not bothering somebody else yeah. um there's another place uh la Femia, which all of uh, 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 the owner of this place is says at all of his bars he has like five bars in Tulum at the beach and outside of the beach and they're also very free like as long as you're in private property and you have the okay from the owner that you can be naked it shouldn't be a problem the problem is if you're like getting on somebody's face and they're not okay with it so yeah. if you're naked in your own space you know you're fine i get naked and i go out and do interviews but i i know how to read people when they want me to get close to them and interview them and not so when i see somebody goes like that i don't get close to them you know <laughs> so yeah just respecting other people <laughs> yeah well if you could share some of those places with me uh, later on so i could 
include them in the links. So if anyone is interested in hanging out naked yeah, at sure. bars, um, that would be nice. And you have to be okay with being the only one naked. There's a lot of topless, but naked, naked, I've seen a few. <laughs> it sounds like a really, really nice experience. I'd like to try that. When when I went to, yeah. I think it was Cozumel, there was a bar that, uh -huh. that, there was a bar where they allowed like mainly topless women, but there was a part in the sand, in the beach that said, Naked zone or something like that. Playa Nudista said something like that. So I didn't ask. Oh, really? Yeah, but it wasn't really a Playa Nudista. It was probably like more of an attraction of of the bar. So I okay. went there and I I took off my clothes and like all the waiters were were looking at me like, what's wrong with this guy? Um, <laughs> that was a funny reaction. But I mean, <laughs> if it says Playa Nudista, I'm gonna, I'm definitely going to take off my clothes. Yeah, I mean, why do they put the sign up? So was it or no? No, I mean, I, I, the concept of the bar, it, it was like if women, if women flashed their breasts, they would get a free drink and they would also get a picture and the picture would go in okay. an album. So other, other guests that go to the bar right. would be able to see the picture of them. Um, so it wasn't necessarily nudista, it was more it was more of, of a strategy a strategy to get free drinks and people's attention, but it seemed to be pretty successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A free so, place, I like to call. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Miami TV. Um, what what is or what was? I think Miami TV is still around, right? Yeah. <laughs> So um, Miami TV started as a Spanish channel only in Latin America. Um, we started, it was basically just like magazine shows, real estate, um, and we would send it to all of Latin America. Then when we started doing like the, our, let's say our events where we would travel and visit different bars and restaurants around the world, let's say, uh, we've divided it. So we've added a Miami TV that's like for, for subscription for our TV shows. And then we have Miami TV Latino, which is the actual like TV station. Um, so that's where you get all the regular shows. And if I were to come out there, I come out really late at night, maybe with some blurs on me. <laughs> but um, but we still maintain that channel as a TV station. It's, it's actually also in the, I think it's in the west of Mexico. We just keep adding channels to it, honestly. Um, since it's a free signal, everybody that has like um, over the air or satellites and they would say hey you know can we pick up your channel we send it but it's mainly all it's mainly all spanish and wow. the subscription base which is the website one um and raku is well that's like our engine let's say like that's what we do <laughs> and yeah we like to just show entertainment our idea of miami tv was when my husband started it before I even show up, which was a year before I showed up, it was all like music videos from really hot Russian girls. <laughs> so he, it's like, um, he knew rating, let's say, and it, it did bring a lot of people in. And then we said, okay, we, time to start putting programming, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're like, how do we divide like a really naughty or not even naughty, but more risky? Um, there's a word that we used to always use. Um, transgressor there you go yeah. like a transgressional channel um and mix it with like a regular channel it's like well we can't it was too early now we could do it as long as we blur things out and honestly our channels that are us in europe like spain they don't care if they don't if we don't give them like um events where it's not un where, where it's uncensored at night like they complain <laughs> so it's just so different in every country like you couldn't put a woman naked on tv maybe in the u.s unless you paid like tremendous amount of money and it's ridiculous rather than in spain it's just as long as it's after what is it called like minor hour or i don't know what it's called <laughs> as long as it's after the time for children to go to bed you could be naked on tv <laughs> would you consider so, the um, that you do as a as a host to be erotic in nature I've never seen myself as erotic, honestly. I think if I wanted to be erotic, I would have probably gotten my boobs done a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't think there's anything about my body that's erotic. 
<laughs> but you know, I, it, it goes in the mind of whoever's watching, you know? Yeah. But I guess the question is more like oriented towards, is this a strategy to get attention? Is it something aimed towards normalizing the human body or empowering women? Or is there a little kink to it? Like why, or how would you describe the, the use of- It's it's neither. We started doing what we do. Um, yeah. No, go ahead. You can no. hear me, right? Or am I cutting up? It, it's breaking up a little bit, but um, yeah, it's okay. It's breaking up, right? Yeah. I think we might um, have to pause and I ask, maybe the internet's not so good today. Can we? Okay, so, so you were explaining to us uh, the use of nudity <laughs> and, and what you guys do as Miami TV. Okay, so um, I think everybody can take this however it is that they want. Um, for us, the main reason why we ever started nudity to begin with, it's all based in positive energy. Um, and I know this is going to sound like a BS marketing thing for most people, but for those that are members that have been with us for 12 years, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So I always like to say, don't judge this book by its cover. And I think we all say that, right? Um, so we started particularly doing the nudity because uh, me and my husband share a gift of giving people positive energy, but I'm the one to actually share it. Like I'm the one to emanate it. So my body, the more that I've evolved in the spiritual journey the more that my body is able to give off this positive energy and it actually goes through the sensible spots of the skin and it goes through the pores of the skin so uh clothing isn't really an option for me like if i could i try to be naked as much as i can specifically because of the energy um you know like it's it's been a really long process where at the beginning where i started this whole nip slip for example um, it was a sense, it was really a sense of testing what was there and if there was really a gift like I, like what I was being guided towards, if it was real. And when I started seeing people's reactions and that it was most of the time always positive and not sexual, um, I said, okay, well, if, if this is really who I am and this is really what I have, then you know, let me push myself a little more and a little more. So so then I would start wearing really short skirts. But we're talking about, these are very personal experiences of mine and of, of members that have been with us for so many years that we have tried putting other girls to do what I've done in the past 11 years. And we have not been successful specifically because when you put a girl half naked in a bar with a bunch of drunk people, people don't react the same way. <laughs> they yeah. don't react respectfully. So I've you know, been able to prove throughout so many years that there is something there. I do have a protection. I do have something that people receive that makes them happy. So um, our really, our mission of the channel, whether you like it or you don't like it or you believe or not believe in it, it doesn't matter because we believe in it 100% or 1,000% is going to places and giving people that positive energy. So um, if that means uh, that I'm called a nudist or a naturist or an ex exhibitionist, I really don't care. You know, for me, it's just, I'm doing a job which is not only entertainment, but it's also making people receive something that they probably would never go to receive because they wouldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I've done seminars for the past 10 years that are naked. You know, I traveled to Cuba. I don't really make these things public, but it's, it's just what I do. I have a gift of giving energy through my body. It's, it's something that I was born with that I just had to develop. So the more that I develop it, I guess you could say, the more comfortable I am with my nudity and with the expression of being able to do what I do. So I like to say that I don't really have a category of where I fit with all this, but there, there is a reason, a purpose of everything that we do behind it. And it's really to get people to a better path whatever that seems for the person. You know, we have subscribers that, are, are, that aren't that are even nudists or natures, but they're just, uh, maybe they were looking for something else. And they're like, well, I was looking for something more erotic or something more sexual. But now that I feel the energy and I've seen the change that it's had in my life because I've given it a chance, like I've had people that have left porn altogether. And I'm talking hundreds of people. <laughs> so I know exactly what it is that I'm doing. And it doesn't matter to me what people believe or think that I, that they think I'm doing, um, because I'm 100% convinced of what I do and the way that we help people. It's just 
there's nothing that you could say to make me change my mind or change my ways or anything. It's just, um, our mission is just to help people and that's it. And if we can also at the same time, have fun, great, do great shows and do a great entertainment channel at the same time, then it's like a win-win for us. You know, it's, it's doing a spiritual work at the same time and having a really great network channel, let's say at the same time that just go hand in hand. So yeah, that is why we do what we do. Awesome. That was a great explanation. I, I really respect and admire it. And especially because I feel like it's very powerful. Well, I think the reason why you get such positive feedback from people when you, when you're there in person is because you have a really nice way to conduct yourself. Like you're in charge of the situation and you, you, I don't know. I mean, I, I personally don't believe I don't know if I believe, like I, I have a conflicting, I haven't made up my mind regarding energy. I'm still, I'm still right, trying that's to I said, like, Everybody's different. You have to totally respect that. Like, yeah, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm not saying I disagree with it. I just, no. I don't feel like I'm at a point where I understand it, but I understand. But you, the way that you conduct yourself online and also, um, I haven't seen many of your shows, but on, on the shows or in person, it's it's really nice to see someone as empowered as you are, like in control of the situation. And I think that it's very healthy for men, especially to be exposed to a powerful woman who is in control of her body, who who is in control of the situation. And I think that the more that men are exposed to women that are, are not being objectified, like yeah. porn and other things like that, the more they learn to respect women, I think. I'm not sure if, if, if that's true or not. It's, it's honestly, I think probably the number one thing that happens when we do our shows, because we don't like editing stuff out. So, you know, we, we usually do things live here in Tulum. The internet's not so great, so we don't go live unless there's a place with really good internet. But, um, but you can see, I mean, there's places where people have acted in a, in a way accordingly to their age and their alcohol. But for the most part, let's say like a 98% of all the places we've ever, we've ever been to, it's, it's on the contrary. It's, you know, can I take a picture with you? But can I hug you? Can I, you know, can I touch you? And I'm like, so I think that says something. And at least that's the vibe that I get from other people that are around. And I guess I'm not really trying to do that, but I'm happy that it works and, it, and that, that is happening <laughs> where it's, it's normal. And if you, you know, if you do want to, let's say, touch somebody, you need to get permission for it, for example. So I think uh, without even noticing, we are having that kind of action. Um, and the guys can absolutely show that they're respectful and not inappropriate whatsoever. They can have a conversation with a naked woman in a in a place where it's full of, with people with clothes. It's just a matter of, do they want to, you know? And it's just a matter of, are you gonna let them? So, yeah. How did you get into this positive energy? Like you mentioned that you were being guided. Who was guiding you? Um, so we work with 25 meditators. Um, they're nomad meditators. Uh, normally it's people that have been maybe priests or um, even working for the Dalai Lama, they've gone against the whole system, let's say, because it's very monetized and um, they literally just don't have homes. They, um, I guess we could say they're, yeah, nomads. They go from town to town, but like to keep themselves in towns that really need help, like um, places in the Middle East um and they're the ones that really just manage the energy of somebody like me for example if there was somebody to be able to channel a specific amount of energy it's their job to like guide you protect you and use the energy that you can give off for good purposes i think we're actually going to be running out of light and i don't have a light but i can go downstairs if you want there's light sure. there sure let, let me <laughs> right. go ahead and pause Okay, so Jenny, I want to thank you for all the trouble you're going through. I know that we're having a lot of problems with the internet connection going in and out. Um, I know that you're busy. You're very busy doing a lot of things and you've put a lot of effort and time into having this conversation with me. So I'm very grateful for that. We're good. We're good. <laughs> and 
before we before we go, can you tell me? Can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now in Tulum? Your energy. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, energy Tulum. So that's actually where we are right now. <laughs> I'm right now underneath our transparent dome. This is like a little hangout area for uh, people that rent out the dome or for volunteers. So um, the purpose of Energy Tulum is mainly in the long run to start doing seminars here. Um, but the place is basically like a spiritual retreat place. You know, we're just starting. We just have two cabins now. We should be finishing two more in the next two months, a barbecue area. We're trying to make it as nice as possible, kind of like luxury in the jungle. Um, but the main, main focus for this place is positive energy and people to come here to receive positive energy and to learn about sexual energy, about Tantra, about what we like to call spiritual sex, which is, I think, super important in today's world that people need to, especially, I think, nudists, because they have such a taboo about you know, sex. And I think we could have another conversation about this another day. But um, there's, you know, one thing is freeing the body of its insecurities and being nude. Another thing is freeing the soul and mind um, towards our sexuality in a positive way. So yeah, I can't wait to give you a tour soon. Um, you guys have to come visit. <laughs> Hopefully, if, if things go well, I'm looking forward to probably going around um, winter. The good thing is that okay. in Tulum, winter is still pretty nice. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't get winter, so I don't know when that is. When is winter here? <laughs> like well, December? <laughs> around, well, I'd say maybe around November might be a good time. September, November. Yeah. Just don't come for Christmas. I won't have time for you. Come before. Okay. No, <laughs> I'm not any crazy with family. <laughs> but you can still come. You just probably won't see me as much. <laughs> It'd be nice to have you around. So we'll, we'll probably make it around maybe September, November, if, if all goes well. So Jenny, thank you very much for your time. And I, I want to thank everyone for listening to this conversation. I want to apologize because we didn't have the best internet connection. So some of the conversation went in and out. And probably because of this reason, I'm only going to upload this to my Patreons. But if we do get the opportunity of visiting you on winter, <laughs> We're going to have to set aside a couple of yeah. hours to sit down and, and chat. Yeah, absolutely. And um, by the way, for those that do follow Hector, I, I did an interview with him and that also had audio problems. So I think it's just our thing, you know, like we constantly yeah. have audio problems with each other. <laughs> there, okay. there might be, a, we'll get it right. I think the energy is probably stuck. There's something wrong with our energy that is not flashing. It's not vibing. It's just yeah. strong. It's just strong. <laughs> It's overwhelmed. Until you say, I believe. <laughs> yeah. All right, Hector. You're, my, you're amazing. Thanks for everything that you do. I know a lot of people appreciate it and respect you a lot. So it was a pleasure meeting you and your wife. And I thank God you guys are amazing. And I can't wait to see you again. And yeah, hit me up whenever. I'll stop cutting trees and come. You know, that sounded bad. I don't cut trees, but you know, stop <laughs> machete down the jungle. I do machete down the jungle. <laughs> That's very come sweet. Here. <laughs> and I also want to give you my, my admiration for the work, for all the years that you've been doing this, for everything that you do. For I had a really positive experience meeting you. I didn't really know what to expect out of the, the big TV personality that you see on social media, but it was very nice to meet yeah. you. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to Thank doing you. this in the future. Thank you. Absolutely.